Morning guys, um, I'm going to, this is a result of a remote viewing session I did yesterday at 7pm on Antarctica. Following that remote viewing session I did another one today um, from 10.42 to 11.10 to expand upon the original remote viewing session. Um, during the session um, I when I remote view, I use a, a technique um, based upon the Jewish Kabbalah, which is mysticism, which uses a macabre and um, letters from the Hebrew alphabet um, for protection. Um, I travel there, um, I suppose you term, you term it the astral realm. Um, I don't use a traditional technique that they, the modern remote viewing schools are teaching. Um, I use what I, what I consider is a, a very old technique that many prophets and seers understood. Um, it can be dangerous in as much as you expend a lot of energy. And when I, when I do this, um, I can usually find I can need it about half hour at a time because um, when I come back, it gives me a bit of a headache. So I'm just going to go into the remote viewing session of Antarctica. Um, one of the things that absolutely struck me was I saw buried in the ice um, a what you would term a sphinx, but the face was upwards, so it was lying down looking up like this. Very similar to the, the face on Mars. Um, and I was also shown some sort of energy grid or energy device that I think surrounds it. This was based upon four rectangular dark objects, and I think I was looking from above. So these may have been obelisks uh, or pyramids, I don't know. But um, four rectangular objects, and they're connected by some sort of grid. And the Sphinx and Antarctica is in the middle. I did a little drawing in my book yesterday. It's not the, I'm not the greatest of artists, but this is to show you what I saw. I hope you can see this okay. Let's bring that in there. There you go. Can you see that? So that's the picture of the Sphinx. And the energy grid. Now, after I did this remote viewing session, I did a quick Google search, Sphinx in Antarctica, and much to my surprise, I found there was an article published in the Sun newspaper last year um, about two um, UFO researchers that had believed they discovered a Sphinx in Antarctica on Google Earth. And I read the article, and it's quite interesting. There's no mention of the rectangular power grid just the, the Sphinx, which obviously the Sun ridiculed. Um, now, being a rational remote viewer, you, there's a possibility that I actually saw this story, I read this story, and it was in my subconscious. Um, that's something I, I don't know. I don't recall reading the story. Um, and the image I saw in my remote viewing session was very, very clear. So that then led me on to do another remote viewing session today. Um, today's remote viewing session... Um, when I do remote viewing, um, I get information come through like a massive download um, into my mind um, or consciousness. And I usually see things quite clearly. Sometimes they're just words, quite often they're objects. So I'm just going to read through my diary here. This is what I actually wrote in. Okay, this is today's remote viewing session. A cobalt, black, dark, dense object. There are actually three sphinxes. There's a connection to Orion, um, anti-gravity technology based upon harmonic sound was used to lift and move heavy objects like the Great Pyramid of Cheops. Currently in Antarctica, there is a Chinese submarine in the water doing research. They, there was an energy, energy generator based upon a crystal diode network to power some sort of portals and it used it used quartz crystal. Um, there's something deep beneath the seabed, a very a large black obelisk that is generating some sort of energy or heat. And there's lots of bubbles coming up from it. This thing's very big. Um, I also saw on the side of it a gold eye of Horus, which was carved into it as an insignia. There's another sphinx in the jungle which is yet to be discovered, and I feel that's in the Amazon somewhere. 
all the planets in our known universe are connected by what I can term tunnels of light. Uh, they're like elevator shafts, basically. Um, the Anunnaki, um, I can hear Anunnaki darker, uh, a darker race. Uh, they used technology to induce mass amnesia of mankind as to their origins. Okay, this a dark entity which currently sits on the throne of the inner earth, and there are inner earth dwellers. There's a vast pink crystal uh, in the centre of the earth which is surrounded by three copper rings. And these copper rings sort of circulate around this crystal like they're floating in midair. The estimated height of this, um, I put it at 10 to 15 metres, so it's huge. Now the copper rings that float around it, um, I felt were impregnated with other minerals, perhaps small diamonds. And it's so far beyond our comprehension that we, that we would call it magic, basically. Um, and the Earth has an inner sun, and this inner sun, this, this light source, is actually generated by this crystal technology, which we don't understand. I also felt there was underground railways, that, or what we call a railway, that float around on a single um, magnesium monorail, and they travel between vast cathedral caverns. They worship an ape god, um, which I call Toph. There's a very strong connection here to ancient Egypt. I'm just going to show you another picture. This is the picture I drew of the pink crystal. I hope you can see that okay. And this thing is about 10 to 15 metres high and about 10 metres across. And they, they use a lot of... I felt, I felt they use a lot of crystals um, in, a, in a technology we do not understand or we've simply forgotten about or it's been covered up. Um, I can't explain the amnesia side of it. Um, I mean, since a young child, I've had flashbacks of previous lives and and lost civilizations and during one of these flashbacks many years ago i had a very strong connection with ancient egypt during which i i was a priest um in a temple um and basically there was craft flying around in ancient egypt flying craft what we would I'd probably call today ufos but they weren't extraterrestrial these were on the earth okay and i think this technology has been covered up i do think that it's been rediscovered by some governments of the world or there's a hunt to rediscover it um the inner earth theory um is a well-known theory that's been expanded many times admiral bird obviously flew over the poles in search of an inner earth and there are supposed to be polar openings i'm going to do some more reviewing uh, remote viewing techniques on antarctica um over the coming weeks and also on other places in the world, um, such as um, Avery and Stonehenge in the UK, uh, Machu Picchu and other places. Um, obviously, if any remote viewing like this, um, this is all supposition on my part. Unless I, I can actually go there, I can't say whether this is true or not, or this, this conjuring up for my own imagination. But I know from past experience that when I've done remote viewing, and um, and I've helped people to locate stuff, or I've done stuff more in the, what I call the physical world. It's proven to be very accurate. Um, I had a couple of things in the past where I um, about CERN, um, an announcement CERN made about Einstein's theory of relativity being faster than the speed of light. Um, I actually picked that up 18 months before. It was published in the newspapers, and uh, much to my shock, it's in one of my diaries. There's been other stuff as well, so I know it is accurate. So I can only assume that what I'm relaying here is true. Um, I'm reporting it to you as I see it. I don't, I don't make it up. I don't, I don't embellish it. Um, but I'm also, um, you, you have to be slightly skeptical, skeptical, and ask yourself, does this come from my own subconscious? And of course, unless I, I can actually go there and see this, I don't know. I know I've done remote viewing on Area 51 as well in the past, and I've picked stuff up there that was confirmed by other remote viewers that had similar experiences, so we can almost compare notes. And again, it's stuff that I didn't I didn't read about. Um, so that's it at the moment. I'll just say that I'm developing a couple of new social media channels. You can find me on Telegram under Visionary Insights, where I'm posting up um, videos and articles. 
but I'm also going to be building in a new website which will be called Visionary Insights, which explores consciousness and our relationship with consciousness and um, alternate realities and a multi-dimensional universe. And there's lots of stuff going to come on there as well, um, which will hopefully um, help mankind in these very dark days. Um, so that's yeah, that's all for now. My name's Ian Broadmore. Um, thank you for listening, and I'll um, I welcome any comments, and um, I'll do another video soon. Thanks for now. Bye bye.